Me, myself. I do want to have a couple of sentences to say before we, you ask me what you have to. Saw it on somebody's post and I loved it. It resonated so much with me that I did want to read it out here aloud. Okay. So it's just a screenshot of something I came across and I resonated so well with it. So I thought, let me just read it out aloud. It goes, everyone you meet always ask you if you have a career, are married, mm -hmm. or own a house, as if life was some kind of grocery list. But nobody ever asks you if you are happy. Why is that important for you? I think it should be important for everybody. What is life without happiness? Is that what stopped you? Got you to start thinking? What is your life without happiness? No. I am where I am because the main reason is for, first for dignity. And then everything else that comes along. But I think being where I have been for last uh, almost a year, maybe if this post I'd seen a couple of years ago, I wouldn't resonate with it. But where I have come and evolved and where I see myself, this makes so much sense. Does it give you peace? It gave me peace, hence I'm talking about it. Hopefully it gives peace to more people. Okay. Auntie, this is just a conversation. And I know we are going to go in this together. I have no idea where this conversation is going to go, and I don't think you know also. I don't. Okay. But I do know where we're going to have to start. So we are both aware that by having you sit here, a lot of people are going to tune in <laughs> <laughs> just for the gossip. No, because but they want to. The choice is there. We put it up for, we know our intent. We can't choose their intention of hearing it, and so be it. Okay. Because I know I don't want this to be a gossip session. And I know you didn't want to. And it's important that we say this is for... This is about dignity, I feel. This and I'll agree with you here, because until I met you, I was using the word respect. But since our first telephone conversation a few weeks ago, I changed the word from respect to dignity. What's the difference for you? Mm, I didn't go through a dictionary to see what what means, what either of them mean in the dictionary language. Mm -hmm. But having said that, maybe dignity, when I say I'm keeping in mind my upbringing, my parents, I don't know if I'm making sense, but it's just digni dignity is more, uh, I don't know the right word here, but... Uh, That's okay. It's more, uh, dignity comes from a certain place. And that certain place, in my case, being my parents, my bringing. Like respect is as at a very personal level, mm -hmm. but dignity is something beyond. It's something almost wordless, I find. It's something of demeanor. You carry it, you don't have to express it. And yes. when someone strips it away, or you feel, it, not someone, but you feel it stripped away. You don't know who you are from the inside. That's how Correct. I've come to understand it. And I totally agree with you. So, Auntie, when we talk about respect and dignity, I know you go back. We've spoken a couple of times. Yes. And I like the part how you started with your upbringing, because I know I'm going to share with you what the thoughts that I'm t going with this is. I found myself in split of who I need to be, who I should be, and who I want to be, and mm -hmm. for a long time. And it always starts with our childhood. Yes. I want it, but your childhood is quite different also. It's quite a modern childhood for back then. What was your childhood like? I don't know about modern or not, but it was a very secure childhood. Uh, it was a very warm upbringing, a very healthy home that I grew up in. 
So give me, a, give, me, give me a description. What was it like? It was like there was harmony, there was happiness. Even a small ritual of doing arti, our Indian mm-hmm. puja in the evening. A combination of many, 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 many factors which uh, I have been blessed to experience as I was growing up. In spite of being in Hong Kong, being born in Hong Kong, coming to Calcutta, moving to Nepal for four years, coming back to Calcutta and then moving to Delhi from mm-hmm. where I finally got married. That's a lot of moving. Yes, but it never seemed like, oh, such a trauma I had while I was growing up and mm-hmm. there my moms and dads are. We didn't even know how it was happening. It was such a smooth sailing all through. Like mom and dad, I'm sure, took care of everything that it made us seem like the only thing to do is be together and no matter where that takes us. And that was, you're saying, it's a lot of moving. And this moving happened in the first um, eight to nine years of my life. Because when I turned nine and before I turned 10, I lost my father, my hero. What was that like? I know he's your hero. My dad was my hero. Why was he your hero? He was my hero, again, for the bringing he gave us, mainly. And him coming from a very tough upbringing. I don't know how he managed to do it. We were four siblings, one after the other. Four siblings? Yes, four, four and I'm number two in the line. I can remember, yes, it is coming to my mind when in Nepal it used to be cold in the winters and mom would be running the hot water tub and she would be soaping and rinsing us off and their daddy standing behind her with a towel to wrap each child up and take him to the take him or her to the bedroom, pat the child dry and cream powder, whatever, and put them in the pajamas and tuck them in bed. Yeah. So for back in the days to have a father, a man do all that, now that I think was a lot. A big deal. So for you you consider your father the modern man? You know, I never thought about him in any perspective of modern or old school. Mm-hmm. In fact, now sitting here is then, that is all coming back to me. Okay. It's giving me a chance to go back and remember some of the things I've forgotten. Really? Yes. And it's a good feeling because as life went on, even in my adulthood and when I moved to Curaçao, life changed, totally changed. And then... I was, I was okay all through, and um, I was doing it very happily also. But when my grandchildren came along about 10 years ago, no, more than 10 years ago, if my ch- girls, daughters have to come and ask me, but Ma, when did I take my first step, or when did I first walk, or the first about their lives, I have no memory. That saddens me. I was going to ask you. Because I sad- see your, your eyes fall. Yes, it saddens me. Having said that, I'm among the lot of grandmothers, a lot, the uh, um, group of grandmothers here on the island, of which I am ages in my favor. I'm blessed to have not one, not two, but four grandchildren. Wow. I'm young still. I have the energy. Mm-hmm. So... In this world that we live in, I'm a big believer of uh, karma and its rewards and its, uh, well, punishment is not the right word, but for all your debits and credits in this life, if I may say so. There is no hell, there is no heaven. Sandy, you you know, you're you're talking, okay, you have your grandchildren, your daughters were asking you, your eyes have fallen into that. Why did your eyes fall? Well, the sadness it brings in me, but then I don't want to be carrying that sadness on along or brewing about it. So then I look up again, I smile, and I say, here, now I'll do things with these little ones and not forget these. I'll capture the moments, and I'll do what I can to the max with them. Sani, let's go to one part then we haven't said. You said your father was your hero. Where's mom? <laughs> My mom, she's more than a hero now that I've been thinking about her and with my conversations with you. I'm glad I'm doing this because it is giving me a chance to honor my mom. From being a housewife 
Well, first to begin with, to get married at the age of 29, which was so not done in those days. You were married at the age of 29, you got married? My mother got married. Your mom got married? Married when she was 29. Isn't that considered late? Yes, late, but destiny. Mm. And this is getting married to somebody who she could have gotten married to 10 years ago. But her mother refused the proposal, and there my dad goes back to Rangoon, Burma, also unmarried, to come back 10 years later to marry the same girl and for the same girl, my mother, to go to Burma. Mm. So having said that, they got married and she went to Burma. From there, they had to flee to Hong Kong when she had my older brother already and I was, she was carrying me. And uh, dad made her very comfortable all through so to us, she was just like a ma, just mom, and I think we take our mothers for granted, you know, it's so sad. Kind of. I know, yes. I, I do admit I took my mom for granted. I would say no. Yes, I did too. And, uh, and here's this lady who from being a housewife, because she moved wherever, my move was because of them, with her. Yeah. And she was a typical, typical housewife, and who lost her husband, who went out on a business trip and never came back home. Your father went on a business, business trip, trip and, and he never came not, home? He never came home. Even for the funeral? No, even his funeral was done in the city where he passed away, which is Mumbai, mm -hmm. while we were in Delhi. She was with him in his last few days. I can't even remember the number of days. On his bedside, and she tells us how, how, how he would recognize her by the feel of her hand, mm -hmm. was able to tell, not his head, if it's the wife or the sister who's giving him the hand. Mm -hmm. So that was their bond, their love. So you but saw a lot of love. I saw a lot of love. And then after doing the rituals, she mm -hmm. comes to Delhi. And then after finishing the, finishing the norms of 12 days of rituals, on day 13, she goes to open the factory, which was run by my father, and converts from a homemaker, a housewife, a mother, to a businesswoman. And having children who are all... So she, she took over the business and ran this, like, boss yes. we're talking about. Yes. yes. She had no option. 13 days after he passed away. Yes. Norm is after 13 days to go open your business place. And the day we walked in there, a senior member of uh, our family told her, that's your seat. Please sit down. Wow. I don't know if she had a choice or not. How oh, she felt. I have no clue. Yeah. But having said that, she did her role just well, just amazingly well, because she continued to send us to this private school. She continued to give us our holidays. And she did end up marrying us all off to the best of her capacity. So she was house, she was mom and businesswoman. Yes. So she ran that whole business. She ran the whole business. And a did mom duties. A very modern lady, I must say. Sorry? A very modern lady. I mean, Again, today, I can't use the word modern, but a very responsible, a very, um, what's that the word for responsible? A very... Responsible because she felt that if she doesn't do this, what is going to happen to her four children? The reason I use the word modern is maybe because when I was raised, I was told basically, have your education. When your education is done, we're going to get mar married, and that's your life is with your husband, mm -hmm. right? And then we we never saw what if happens the what if moments because you in those days it was not a you know it's unspoken for a woman to do everything on her own and you've chosen also a path of your own yes but uh, maybe she was modern to the extent the way you explain it mm -hmm. but she was conservative in her own way because she also wanted us to finish her schooling the girls especially me and my sister who's the last of the sibling to finish just our basic schooling and get married. That was big on her mind, to see us happily married, settled. Mm -hmm. She wouldn't talk much about the boys, 
But to have us girls settled was... Not that she spoke about it, but I know that was big on her mind. So was your marriage arranged marriage? No. My marriage was a love marriage. Yours was a love so probably marriage. I made it easy for her. Okay. She didn't have to go looking for somebody for me. No, you did. No. How did she feel about that, if you don't mind me asking? She accepted it in a few words. So she had her concerns? Probably as a mother, she could foresee some things I couldn't foresee. Having said that, she respected my decision. And today, when I've been reflecting back on the journey of my mother, mm -hmm. who gets married at the age of 29, is married for 14 years, in, in the duration of which she has four children, two miscarriages, and then boom, her life changes. That's a lot to take in. And she did it with a smile. Have you And that, now I can say, is... When we were talking about dignity a few minutes yeah. ago, yeah. maybe that was, that was a, she was a dignified woman, uh, if I may say so. Yeah, I can see that. Because she puts her head up high and then she just and, gets on and, with and, it. And uh, is also keeping up with all her social obligations. So she maintained everything throughout? She did, to the best of her capacity. Mm -hmm. But I've reflected on her so much more after talking to you mm -hmm. that I've it's really opened my view, my, my admiration for her. I'm so, so, so proud of her. Mama, I wish you were here for me to, for you to once hear it from me, Ma. Do you, it's a bit pokey, but do you not see your reflection, her reflection in you now? You know, <clears throat> for all us four siblings, everybody since I was little has always told me how much I look like my mom mm -hmm. amongst all four. Mm -hmm. And I would agree to that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't think I'm there yet. Maybe what I, where I am, she is instrumental in imbibing some, unconsciously, the, uh, some traits or some, her strengths, not traits, strengths, imbibing in me, not consciously, but as children, right, we are sponges, we absorb everything that we see. Yeah, we do. So maybe I just took in and in and in, and now if I have to reflect back that here, she is probably the, also one of the reasons for? My strength. Uh, the fruits of a tree don't fall far, right? So a woman with so much strength, where will it go? To her children. Annie, when you were growing up, your father passes away, you're at a young age, you're processing all that. Did you ever feel like you had to be responsible at that young age? I did feel I had to be responsible, but somehow being number two in the line of sibling, I do remember that I had to, or I wanted to, or it just happened, I really don't know what the right word is, I had to up my place in the line of siblings. Can you give me an example? Maybe the responsible me made me do things which I wouldn't do if dad was around, but I do remember myself rising to be with Ma when she needed me. Mm -hmm. To just be there, not to make, not to put anybody else down, anybody else up, but I just felt that, okay, let me just hang around her. You know, I admire all you women, in Cindy women, especially women, because you get married, and then most often lose your entire name. Correct. So you are actually not Bhavna... When you got married, you became Bhavna Savalani. But Correct. before marriage, you had, a no, you had a first name and a last, last name differently. Yes. Uh, and, I mean, and before you continue, yeah. I get married and they change, my name is changed from Bina to Bhavna. Yeah. And a uh, numerologist uncle wants to add additional A in my name for a better relationship between me and Manu. 
So I did not become Bhavana, I became Bhavana. Okay, hold on. Yes. So we're, we've been calling you wrong all this time? Yes. Oh, that's no, nice it's enough. right. Pronunciation. <laughs> it's supposed to be pronounced Bhavana, but if a local person looks at it, they will definitely pronounce Call it Bhavana. as Bhavana, okay. which I was not okay with. I don't know what Bhavana means, but I know what Bhavana means, yeah. and I want to be Bhavana. <laughs> and so then, hold on. I need to know this because I'm curious, because this was me being a rebellious person. I used to be angry at the whole point that I had to lose my name when I get married. How are you okay with that? As a woman, I got to ask. I... Do you change? Do you feel like you're different before and after? I did change. I did change. Not going into details, but yes, no. there was a big shift in my life. And not only shift in my life or lifestyle or whatever else you may want to say mm -hmm. or perceive it as, but again, going back to Bhavana, I come here to Curaçao and people go Bhavana or Bhauna or... That was unacceptable. And to and make it easy... Because it's your dignity again. We're going back to... Yeah, but then I was not so big about... I was just so busy in life that you just wanted to flow, just do things. Mm -hmm. You get married, you come to a new place, you're the first sibling to leave home. There's no telephone calls. There is the... Um, telegram costs you a bomb. In those days? Yes. Really? Okay. So all we did was to, and love marriage, we knew we had to make it work, mm -hmm. and we wanted to make it work. Yeah, there was course. no gun to our head. Yeah. So to make it easy for the world, I took a step further, and I went on to tell everybody, okay, I'm Mrs. Manu. So, so you didn't, you, you, lo you let go of Bina... Kind of let go of ba Bhavna, Bhavana, Bhavana to Mrs. Manu. Yes. Okay, so you, so there's the identity is now associated with partner. Yes, Okay. totally. Which today, I go by the name Bhavna. Well, it's Bhavana because all my legal documents say that. Mm -hmm. But it's Bhavana S. And I'll emphasize on the S here. What does the S stand for? S. Here in this instance stands for Shivnani. So after losing it all, I am proud to be a Shivnani. Mm -hmm. But then to each their own. If somebody perceives it as Shivnani, as Savlani, as XYZ, not my concern. No, but to give context, because I know there's people listening also, they don't understand it. So your married name before was Shivnani's last name. Mm -hmm. Now you are legally not with your partner. Correct. So now it is, you know, so you're letting go of Shivna Savalani going to Shivnani. So you're now, it's almost like emergence of two, two parts of you. Because you obviously changed a lot. You didn't... Instead of saying the emerging of two, what is it uh, then? It is, in fact, the other way around. Okay, so tell me. It's like to detach from Mrs. Manu mm -hmm. and to become Bhavna. And because we are not, uh, we are legally separated. Yeah. Hence the S. Now I cannot go around this island where I've stayed for 41 years and expect to be called by Bina. That ain't happening. And yeah. that's not right or not expected. Yeah. So, okay, I am Bhavna, but S. So it's not the merge of two, what, has, what I have gone through in the last few months. It is the undoing. What is the opposite of merge? I'm, I'm going to be a pokey from a woman's perspective. Pokey in the sense that you've got two beautiful daughters. Absolutely yes. gems, right? Yes. And they are from, from your partner. Yes. Okay, now you're legally separated, but so... To me, at least in my head, I see that there's two beautiful, there's a, there's a beautiful Bina and there's a beautiful Bhavna. Okay. And they've come together because your strands of your daughters are from Bhavna. Mm -hmm. But you're now allowing your best of your beautiful twos come together, I almost feel. Because you're doing something spectacular too. You're almost living your mother's life. What are you doing now? You've started up something as well. Yes, I have. But... Um now that you 
put it in those words. <laughs> I mean, that's how I see it. Maybe I, you know. I, I understand and I accept it also. Yeah. But that's not the reason why I did it. Okay, so why share with me a little bit more? I just to understand it because I could be off, but that's how I see it. When last year I took this decision, I could have just lived my life, lived in my life, lived my life as in just travel, get up at 10 a.m., go to the gym for a couple of hours, meet, meet or gossip for another couple of hours. That's not me. Yeah. I've last 41 years, I've always had a purpose when I wake up in the morning. So having done all what I did, I was left without a purpose. And okay, I agree. I still want to travel. I still want to indulge. But how much of traveling? Even if I travel six months of the year, what do I do for the rest of the six months? Because it took you a lot of courage to do what you did. That's why everybody tends, wants to tune in and listen to a story that I, that I don't understand why. <laughs> but you took the courage to do it. And then you wake up and you go, now what? Yeah, now what? So then I decided it's time to do something productive uh-huh. so that I go to bed content after having a tick mark on a productive day, Yeah, but not become a slave of my business and not have no life at all. I'm at the liberty to take her from today to tomorrow mm-hmm. or for a day, a week, a month and know the business is at a level which will go on. I'm still getting there. I'm just... Three months into the business. But you you were always known, at least to me, you are quite a powerful woman in business already, right? For years. So this is not really... I don't know what you mean by powerful. Well, But the business that you're talking about was a whole empire. Yeah. It comes with its uh, lot of perks. Perks as in the sense you have a... 24-7 24-7 accountant, you have a back office to rely on, you have an HR person, you have an in-house tech person. But right now, it's all about me. So you are starting from scratch, scratch, scratch. Scratch, scratch, scratch to the extent of going and incorporating my companies, like going to the doors of notaries and lawyers and bankers. Has it been easy? As a woman, is there a difference? To me, not. Okay, so I'm, has it been easy? Uh, it hasn't been easy, but I'm glad it hasn't been impossible. Because every door that I knocked on responded. Oh, that's lovely. Yes. But that's not easy for a lot of women. Okay, I'm going to say it like it is. If you didn't have the name you had today, or then, because you're now in a new name, new face, <coughs> would it, does that matter? Probably... To some extent, it does. It did help me to get where I am mm-hmm. for the old uh, name, yeah. for the old Mrs. Manu Savlani or Mrs. Bhavna Savlani. Mm-hmm. But having said that, I even do realize that there is some worth of Bhavna herself. I want that Bhavna. What is the worth of Bhavna herself? I've even come to realize... Everything is so doable because like mid of uh, last year, Mm -hmm. like in the summer of last year, that there actually are no dead ends in life. It is a perception that makes us see a dead end. I have had to encounter what a normal person would call a dead end Mm -hmm. so many times over and over again, but I've learned to maneuver around it and I've always, always, always found a solution. So the word deadline does not exist in my vocabulary anymore. Is that because of your upbringing or is that because of your marriage or your previous marriage? Let me just say your ex-marriage. It is because of me. Because of you. Yeah, I'm not ready to accept a dead end. If I'm fair and just in asking what I am, I'll go nicely um, in a very cultured, good-mannered way Mm -hmm. and ask for well, what's due to me or get work done that's supposed to get done. I'm not asking for the moon to come down. What I'm asking is for very doable things. And why should I be looked upon as who is asking? It could be somebody else tomorrow in my shoes. And I don't want that person to think that because she doesn't have a 
name behind her, mm -hmm. she will not be able to do what she wants to do. What I, what I want to mm -hmm. ask you is because it, every, a lot of Indian women are known for what their husbands have achieved. Yes. And By so we point. always kind of get, you know, oh, so you're, you know, like my mom would always be like, oh, you're Harish's wife. Yes. You know, um, if I had gotten married, I would have been known because of the husband. But here, here you're saying, that's why I want to know, who is that Bhavna where, that, that you're saying, I am Bhavna. I, because it's me who's a Jesus. What does that look like? Because a lot of women lose their identity when they get married. It looks like um, the most beautiful sunrise on the horizon. Oh, you got to explain that. You can't just say <laughs> something so pretty and then say, okay, you know, here it is. Because there's what no word mean? to do justice about what I'm feeling. Because I realize there's no price for freedom. There's no price for uh, peace, for happiness, for joy. So how do you sum that up for somebody to understand? Okay, Andy, I don't want to get in... There's one thing I don't want to get is I don't want to get into specifics of your marriage. That I find very private, and I want to keep it that way. I, I respect that. So I want to ask you one thing. I know you made that decision and shocked everyone. Yes, I did. And everybody has everything to say. But I want to ask you that moment when you did that internally... How did you process that? Because that wasn't easy. Forget, I don't care, I don't want what everybody says. I want to know, you faced the world in that moment. You took a difficult decision. I, or was it difficult? It I want was, your perspective there. It was difficult until the point I decided I want to do this. Once decided, there was no holding me back. Nothing? Nothing, nobody under the sun. It was also done under a lot of privacy because I couldn't afford to let the cat out of the bag before the time. Okay. Right time. That's why you, hence you did it the way you did? Yes. And when it did happen, Auntie, how did you feel? When you knew, when you felt, you know that it's now out there, how did you feel inside? I want to just know how you felt inside. How I felt inside. I think that feeling has changed in the last few months. But I will definitely go on to say I never felt uh, insecure. I never felt uncomfortable. I never felt uh, awkward walking into a room alone. Mm -hmm. You didn't? I didn't. So I think even if you know all people, you know, our community... They wag their mouths. Yes. They have a lot to say. They jump to so many conclusions. I know when I went through it, I got resent. I got resentful. How did you just stand so calm? I mean, I'm that, that amazes me. I'm like, Maybe because what how? you went through probably is not what you wanted to go through. And here I am. I'm asking for this. Okay. So you knew what would happen once yes, you do this? Yes, I know. Because I've lived in this society long enough. I can't deny that. Yeah. But again, how I've been through these few months has been changing. And then it came to a point where it became about a new beginning. Oh, so you, you knew there was an ending and you walked into it with a new beginning mindset? No. Okay. <coughs> when I walked out of this relationship, I did not see the new beginning anywhere close by. But as I kept walking, getting more confident of myself, getting more sure and secure about myself, mm -hmm. it was like something that was deep within me which started to emerge. And the more that emerged, the more stronger I felt, the more secure I felt. And then came new beginning, the term new beginning into my life, which meant mm -hmm. even moving you. homes. You moved homes? I moved home and I know to a lot of people person moves home is because there are too many memories attached to that property or there is emotions attached to that uh, home where you've lived for so mm -hmm. many years it wasn't about that it was about me I wanted a new beginning 
It was where I would be at the end of every day of my life henceforth. So I went on to buying a new home for myself where I'm very, very happy. And I'm genuinely grateful yeah. for it to manifest it, for me to find this home out of nowhere. It's the first home I saw, I loved, and I bought it. Done. Deal. Okay, so I want to know, what was your first moment that you felt the happiest? Like, was it when your daughters walked into the house or that you just said, oh, No, the first night I slept into that house. Into oh, really? in that home. And I did that, unlike many Indian families who do a whole ritual before they go into a new home and things like that. Mm -hmm. It was just about moving my bed, my very basics, and making it my home. It's kind Everything of else followed. And okay, a couple of months went to settle into the new home. Mm -hmm. And then what again next? These mornings to wake up to where you have nothing to do. So then came the thought of new business. So you took it one step at a time. One step at a time. Because whatever I want to do or did mm -hmm. after, in the last year, I want to do it with a very conscious and a very proper way, mm -hmm. if I may use that word. Yeah. So even if uh, a work like incorporation took time, hold it, it'll come true. I remember end of December, I was exhausted. Because I was there in my location two months, all of November, all of December, mm -hmm. sweating it out. Really? And yeah. enjoying it. <laughs> but there comes a point of exhaustion, right? Yeah. So on the 22nd of December, I called my team. Mm -hmm. I said, today we go home to come back on the 2nd of January. Mm -hmm. And then we pick it up from there. I was almost see like the light, the, the joy in your eyes <laughs> of the challenge, you know, of doing it and getting all sweaty out. My meter is running, the yeah. rental is on, <laughs> but okay. Go for it. Go for it. If your body is asking to rest, rest. Can I ask you what was personally for you the most heartfelt or the most challenging of this whole process afterwards? Was there something that, you know, once you made that decision, you went through with it, was there any moment where you stopped and you said, reflected back and said, I could have done this a little differently? No. Not at all. I have no guilt, no regret, and no blame also. The and life that's I lived... That's important for you to mention, yeah. Yes, because the life I lived for the 41 years before I did this, I lived out of my own will. If I traveled to China three times of a year, because I wanted to go, at no point in my life there was a gun on my head to do anything. Mm -hmm. But I was enjoying it, I was loving it, I was so obsessed with my business. I did it with a smile and more. I took it in my pride. And I did it all very willingly. And that journey of 41 years has given me some very glorious moments. Like in this age and time, I can say at certain time, times, in this journey of 41 years, I've lived like a queen too. Yeah. And the world has seen it. Yeah. And for that, due some credit, not some credit is due to Manu, which I'm ready to give him. Yeah. It is, Why not? but having said that, no blame, no guilt, no regret. And no looking back. No, no. I can imagine. But, you know, it goes back. I think this thing is very profound in you where you said, wherever there's a problem, you see there is a solution. I learned to say that. Where did you learn that? Did you learn that from young or did you learn that from, from marriage? Again, maybe something uh, that was in me, but again, because of the life that I had been living, it had gotten buried somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. So once challenged, it woke me up to the other side of me, which I didn't know existed. But having tackled one little... Dead end yeah. made me realize there are no dead, line, dead, dead, dead ends. So it took one, one, one deadline. One dead end. So, okay, so you're saying if all this, so don't wait for the steps, take the one step. No, don't wait for all of it to fall in step before taking the step. Take the one step mm -hmm. and then be responsible for it. Do it very consciously. Do it because you want to do it. Do it because that is the only thing that will give you peace and happiness. 
which every human is entitled to. Even Manu is entitled to peace and happiness, mm -hmm. which I have wished him personally. Yeah, he did mention, yeah. Yes, late last year. There's no guarantees of love in life. None at all. No, because I don't think you expected this. You had a love marriage. Exactly. And we have and other never... arranged marriage, which flows like a smooth, yeah. lifelong relationships. Yeah. It's really nice that you don't regret. Or blame. Or blame. No, I Because don't. that's very hard for many people to get to. Why blame somebody when I did it all with the open-hearted it? heartedness mm -hmm. and I even enjoy the fruits of it yeah so then why blame yeah how did you reconcile that though within yourself so you must have been angry for some you couldn't have just said okay now I'm quite happily to get you know separated but how did you reconcile with your own anger I mean I'm not in you know like I said privacy on that I don't want the details but it's about your feelings here no Kirti to be very honest I still being human, I still have my roller coaster of emotions. You do, right? I do, right. I'll be wrong to say if it's on, it is only joy and happiness and peace. No. There are outbursts. There is anger. But at my down, I'm blessed to have a very, very good support system. I give due credit to my daughters for being there for me. And you but have a heck of a son-in-law too, from my understanding. Yes, who's as dear as a son or as dear as by both daughters. Yeah. But having said that, because of what even they ha must have. Because they're processing as well, right? They're processing as well. And they have had, must have had some collateral damage being a part of the integral family. Yeah. So my support then extends to a little further down. To? Some family and friends. Okay. But they're talking about that. I don't know if this is your diplomatic quality in you. <laughs> but even in a separation, you have a beautiful relationship with Manu's family still, from my understanding. Or am I... With most of them. Most of them. Most of them, yes. And uh, I tr try and I will continue to try to maintain that relation from my end. Because... Not only Manu's family, for anybody else that we both had relationship with, whatever happened, happened between me and him. Yeah. So no third person should ever change his relation or her relation with either me or him. Yeah. This is honestly about a wife and a husband. Yeah. No other third person should be pro me, anti me, or be pro him or anti him. No. So how do you manage those, I call them the awkward moments, you know, when you get yourself in that moment and somebody's a little unfiltered here and there and they come with some X, Y, and Z conclusion. Or they'll tell you, because I've seen people make other people feel bad for their decisions in life. Like, mm -hmm. why did you separate? You could have had it this way or that way. It happens in our community. How do you handle those moments? So there's two ways of even looking at why now? Why after 41 years? Yeah, okay. And the question itself is the answer. Why now? I want more. I'm not a... I, I'm, I'm not... I'm, I'm <laughs> like what? When you say why not, it almost feels to me like if the whatever happened, happened, why are we having this conversation now? When I meet people. I'll give you an example. So when people tell me, you know, oh, you should have gotten married, for example. And I go, well, what's the point of this conversation? How do you manage? Like, I, I find sometimes I have to find my words to be very delicate because I figured this person doesn't understand. And I don't want to bring my private life in, involved. Yes. Okay, now I get your question. Yeah. So people who know me or us, yeah. most of them understood most of them did understand. Oh, that's lovely, yeah. Yes. And the ones who want to make redu, gossip, mm -hmm. none of them ever came up to ask me on my face. So for your daughters, did they ever have to not face that too? I trust my children yeah. to have a good head on their shoulders. And they're not children anymore. They are 
parents themselves. Yeah. And uh, a small family of four, two girls, me and Manu. Mm -hmm. They, and being sponges, children, they must have observed and absorbed mm -hmm. quite a lot in their years while they were with us as a family. Yeah. So I expect them to deal, if it goes to them indirectly, to deal it in their own way, mm -hmm. in a in a uh, adult manner. Have you been able to have those um, sensitive conversations with them now? Or is it after you made the decision? Were you able to have those sensitive conversations? Because you're also processing. Yes and no. I'm sure they still could have a lot of questions on their mind. Yeah. But probably to them, I'm coming like a very stubborn mom. Well, so. My mom's stubborn too. <laughs> <laughs> so having said that, if I'm free. I'm open. My doors are open. Yeah, you've been very open about this process as well. So if they have something that is bothering them, I would love to, to talk about it, not even tell them. That would be a talking. To talk about her version versus my version and where I'm coming from. So those conversations still get had, from my understanding. They're still... Un there's some, ha some have happened, and I'm sure more will happen. More will happen, yeah. Which is totally fine. No, I because some beautiful. people process it in a short time, and me the shortest because I took the calling. So I had processed it before I did it, but their processing started only after I did it. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. And they are living in their own worlds with their own set of friends, with so many different uh, personalities, mm -hmm. multicultural, in a modern society. So I'm sure they've had to deal with their own friends, their own um, contacts, Mm -hmm. in their own way. But I trust them to respect my decision. That feels like it. From our conversations, at least, I've felt that they have walked with you. They have walked with me. They have and walked are with walking me. with you. Yes, they are still walking with me. I think that's beautiful. I know I like, I, I'm very much family. Some of the walking may be a little reluctant. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> That happens in any situation, separated or not, together or not. It happens. So it's part and parcel of life. Yeah, I, 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 I always tell people, if you expect a perfect relationship, then you have not lived. Correct. And we even know, like your four siblings yourself, yeah. how different each one of you are. Very. 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 So likewise, I have two daughters mm -hmm. and... I will not be wrong in saying that they are very different in personality, in their mannerism, in their lifestyle, in everything, in their mothering also. Are they mothering you now? Do you think they mother you? No, they're mothering their children. Or but their the style children. of mothering, like the older one mothers her son in her own way and this younger one mothers her three girls in her own way. You're so, lucky because we mother our mom and she tells us now, you know, like enough. They better not, because I, that's what probably what they'll hear from me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to do mom duties. I'm all more than willing to do grandma duties. Are you making up now as a grandma for what you didn't see when... Yes, big time. What's the best part of it? Give me one glimpse. Oh, give me one, one moment that your okay. heart is filled. Do you, you know, have a favorite one? Let's start. Are no, you, no? I don't, no. Are they all individually different? They're all individually different. And the age gap, especially the three here, mm -hmm. the age gap being rather broad, each one is going through their own phase. Like one who's almost 10 mm -hmm. is at a different stage in her life. The other one is still a kindergartner. Uh -huh. And the third one is still a baby who's just learned to walk. Okay. And you so, have one more also, right? Yes, but he's away in Panama. So his oh, time okay. is his alone when I'm there. Oh, Or when okay. he's here. Yeah. Then it's like family time. Now, children being children, uh -huh. the first thing they do when they come by me is snatch my phone. <laughs> and they know the code. They, I give it to them. They know it because I have given it to them. Uh-huh. So I was with one of my girls here. And I told her, but uh, child, you don't need me. You need my phone, right? Mm-hmm. 
And to me, like she didn't even hear it for the first time. I had to repeat it. Hello? Yeah. You don't need me. You need my phone, right? She goes, no, grandma. I need you. It's not grandma. They call me nani, the Hindu, yeah. Indian way of addressing mom's mom. So nani, I need me, you. I said, but no, I don't think so. Why do you need me? Tell me. Mm-hmm. And this child, children who are innocent, uh-huh. goes, because you are one of the very few but for my parents who can make me feel secure. Oh, how beautiful is that? That's so I can just live by that. <laughs> that's so pretty. And that's the other so one... Home, that's so home, home felt, yes. I would say. And the other one, while she was away on a trip, and she knew I was home alone here, mm-hmm. me and Manu were together, but he was traveling, and she's calling me from a certain airport, and knowing that her absence has been long, she goes, Nani, don't forget, I love you always, no matter where I am. Oh, how sweet. That still echoes in my ears. He's a beautiful joy. With the grandson, okay, now I have to, because it's him, I have this deal with, that every time I meet him, mm-hmm. and you know how you go towards each other and you hug your child? I, my, my way of doing it is I hug him and I lift him. So our deal is, as long as I can lift him, I'm still young. Yeah. And until January, I could lift him. He's <laughs> <Sorry, laughs> quite big now, isn't he? <laughs> Sorry? He's quite a young man now, yes, isn't he? Yes, he is. He's becoming. Yes, he is. But I can still carry him. But, Auntie, have you had to reconcile with them also? Let them know because that was also a shift for them. It's not just a shift for your daughters, but also the grandkids. That's for the parents to do. Okay. So and you I respect. Did, you did give it. You just tell. They did know that they, that it's their yes. conversation. With their children. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Because even when children are growing up, you know, being a grandparent, you tend to give advice. Yeah. Asked or unasked, we do tend to give advice. Having given my advice, I always tell them, mommy's no best. Yeah. So you do, this is my two cents, mm-hmm. but you do what you will feel is right. And I respect that. Auntie, I didn't call you, you called me, right? I like that. I volunteered myself, yes. You volunteered. Yes. Why was that important for you? It was not about me sitting here talking about... It was about being here and talking about me and my journey, Mm -hmm. but also to try and awaken a few more souls who could be in the same journey that I am on. Yeah. Who could find their voice, who could find their dignity who could, in a way, leave a legacy for their children to carry on. That would be so, the most humble thing I could have done in this lifetime. You're talking about legacy. And I wondered if you thought about your legacy, not in the terms of legacy, when you, had to, when you decided you were going to leave the marriage. No, it came much later. The main reason I left the marriage is, again, I repeat, for my dignity. But did you feel lost? No. You knew who you were in the marriage? I knew who I was. And uh, to quite an extent, uh, maybe if shadow is not the right word, then maybe I was in the behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But until I didn't do this, I didn't know how strong I was. Because I was thinking, you know, you're saying, or, you know, like I asked you, why, why did you want to come forward? And you said to wake other women up or other individuals. Correct me. I have to correct it. Other souls up. So for you to look into your shadows and then step out of that shadow, it takes a lot of courage. But then there has to be some, there was a motivation for you to step out of it. But the initial moments you go through it, what can we inspire somebody to understand that their legacy matters too? I want you to think with me on this one, basically. So with everybody comes from a different uh, upbringing, from a different background. And again, I repeat when I say that 
when I initially did this, it was not about my legacy. I didn't even think so far. Mm-hmm. My only thought was I need to do this now. Yeah. And everything else is followed. Mm-hmm. So... It's really, it's really hard. Not in... The generational is different, right? The younger generation are much... I see, I feel they're much easier to make a decision... We're now having to have a careers as women. We have to have a careers. So there's, you're not just a mom, you are also a career woman, and you're also a wife. It's pretty tough, you know. And in our tapestry of culture that we're in, we are also always going to be not just one culture because we don't have a state of our own. Yes, correct. So we're always multicultural. So when you make a decision, when you have to make a hard decision in life, mm-hmm. you, there's almost like this big price you have to pay because you become, the, you become someone's wife, you become Mrs. Husband so-and-so. So when you have to make that step and step out of your shadow, you're actually stepping into it as completely, who am I? Or am I... Yeah, you step out to find out who you are. And if, uh, and if you have belief in yourself, belief in, uh, not belief, power of manifestation, belief in your upbringing, belief in some well-wishers, mm-hmm. it's very doable. So it, was, so it was important for you to have a good support system in check for you to take this decision? No, it wasn't. Because I didn't even know who my support would be. Because nobody knew. Nobody knew. So I didn't even know. In fact, in the last few months, now I can identify who my well-wishers or friends or family are and are not. So you became much more observant after you took this decision? Yes. It was almost like uh, you lift this mask of yourself. Mm-hmm. And you don't just lift a mask. This whole cloud that uh, is hovering over you since last so many decades, like it's four decades and more. Yeah. When that clears up, you get a clarity into everything about your life, about your decision making, about your power, about your strength, about your wants, your needs. So... What is the one thing about you that surprised you about yourself? I don't know if to say my strength or my stubbornness. Both. I mean, it's yours, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's your you story. Word, right? Okay, so take two. But I want to say that what surprises you about yourself from this process? Because the decision. Okay, in different yeah. time. First, the stubbornness and the surety of wanting to do this. Mm-hmm. Having said that, finding my strength, which every person has. Trust me, every person has. Even when you're making normal conversation and you see people going through hardship, as a friend, if somebody is talking to you and the person is at its lowest, I always tell them, have trust in yourself and have trust in whoever you pray to, the nature, the universe, a God-specific God. Mm -hmm. They will toss you, they will throw you, they will turn you, they'll bend you backwards, but they'll never break you. So it's a phase again. Stand strong. Stand, take hold of yourself. And it will pass, like everything else will passes in life. Were you scared? No. You were not scared at all? I was not scared. I may sound very arrogant, but I was not scared. Why would that be arrogant? I don't know how who listens to this as, but I'm not coming from a place of arrogance, no. I was not scared. How long did it take for you to process before the decision? Four months. Four months. No, to process, uh, to get to what I did took me four months. Mm -hmm. And... Well, as soon as I, yeah, four months again is the right answer. Because I decided and I went right ahead with the process. 
So you said there was two things. There's, th- there's that. Mm. What else surprised you about you? My strength. Your strength. And today, my achievements. So what are your achievements? On a spiritual level, my peace, my joy, my happiness, my haven in my new home, in the materialistic world, my business, the, to have the power to indulge in mm-hmm. myself, to enjoy life, mm-hmm. to travel, to pamper my You do pamper ones. yourself? Myself too. Yeah. Big time. Big time. Self-love. That's important. I would say it is important. Only when I love myself or I have love within me can I love you and the rest of the world, including my children and my grandchildren. So it became all, well, then it became all about self-love. I matter. You see this tattoo? I am. Oh, how long have you had that? I am. This September, probably three years. I did it on my birthday a few years ago, where I was at a phase where I thought I could be wrong. Mm. It's my perception about my life at that stage, where I thought I'm non-existent to the rest of the world. Did you think you were non-existent? Yes, I did. Even with Auntie, with all that, people always said you were the it woman. Like, like I said, I, I know when I spoke to your son-in-law, he said, Arkirti, are you sure you want to do this? Do you know how many people are going to tune in? So he made me very also, he reminded me that everybody is there. So you felt really in that non-existence yes, with I did. all that existence around And looking you? at this, my grandchildren saw it and they come to you, right? Nani, yeah. I am. I say, I'm grandma. I'm happy. I'm upset. I'm sad. But I am. I am is very profound, no, in our culture, isn't it? Because I know with all the growth we do spirituality, they say whatever you put behind I am is what you manifest. I didn't know that. No. No, not when I went to do this. This was just to make a noise about myself. Well. And to draw some attention. (laughs) Well, intention you did draw. Let's let's put it there. But I am uh, in the realm of yoga practices when you're working towards your self-realization, I am is the most powerful words in there. And so when I, I thought you knew about that, that's no. when I saw it initially, I was like, wow. Like, okay. No, no, it's not from coming from a yogic <laughs> background. No, it it's isn't. It's just coming from an ownership background. <laughs> yes. I own me. Yes. Oh, I like that. Yes. And if, if today your daughters were sitting next to you, your mm-hmm. granddaughters and grandson, mm-hmm. What would you want them to always remember you for? For being a fair person. What does fair mean? For fair you? is something I've seen from, learned from my dad, which I've absorbed and imbibed from my daddy. To be fair, to be just, to be a giver. Okay, that's another thing I want them to remember me for, as being a giver. What does that mean? Share? The share What of does that mean? The, the joy that I give, I get when I give. The joy of the person who's receiving it, mm-hmm. the smile, the hug. Mm-hmm. That makes me the giver I am. Yeah, you got from your dad? You're... Yes. My dad was a person, and till today people talk about him in Calcutta. When his right hand would give, his left hand wouldn't come to know. His right hand would give and his left hand wouldn't come, come to, to know. know. Okay. That is the kind of giver he was. So that trait I got from my dad. Those are his genes in me. What did you get from mom? Everything else. Like what? Come strength. On. Responsible. Mm-hmm. Responsibility. Strength. Owning up. Accepting. Not playing the blame game. She didn't play the victim card when from becoming a housewife to... From being a married woman, she became a widow from one day one to day two. Yeah. She didn't become a victim. She took on the responsibility. Your mom was, I remember her with great fondness. Very serene lady. 
very serene. I wish I really had appreciated her more than while I had her. I if, really, really do. Can I hopefully not get a tear jerker out of this? But if she was sitting next to you, what would you want to tell her today? Ma, I don't have words to tell you what you mean to me. Ma, you are my strength. Ma, thank you for bringing me into this world, for making me who I am. With Dad for those few years, and even more after he was gone. Ma, I don't know how you did it. In that time and age, I salute you, Ma. I think that's really, really beautiful. What do you want people to know about happiness? Happiness begins with yourself. Don't go seeking it. And don't go, yes, one thing I want to tell people is not to look for validation outside. Please don't. Please, please don't. Validate yourself first for who you are. Recognize yourself for who you are. With your pluses and your minuses, with your strengths and your flaws, mm -hmm. first know who you are. Don't get lost in this mad, mad world. Ali, I want to thank you for coming today. I'm, this is international, I, not International Women's Day, I call it International Women's Month. And I'm very grateful you came on today. Thank you. And like I've had no regrets about everything that has happened in my life since the day I was born, through my childhood, into my married life, into my schooling life, mm -hmm. into where I am today, I, am, I have no regrets for volunteering to be with you here today. Well, I've enjoyed it. We've had quite a few journey together. Yes. We've been two months together. Yes. And, and I'm, I'm going to miss that. I hope it continues some way, somehow. I will. Don't worry. <laughs> but I thank you for opening up because I know it took a lot of courage for you and your family to come to this point. And I think we got to honor that. And I want you to honor that, too, that it takes a lot of courage to open up even a glimpse of your world and to talk through two months with it. So I thank you. I thank my parents for giving me the wisdom to have taken this choice. Well, there we go. And I hope it passes on to someone. So we're going to... About uh, talking about passing on, mm -hmm. I spoke about uh, thank yous and bless yous, right? Yeah. And you asked me, what's the difference? Yes, please. Yes. I want to know that one. <laughs> well, let's, let's, let's have a pre one. I, when people have to tell me thank you, I tell them, no, hold it. Yeah. If there's anything you want to tell me, tell me bless you. Why? Thank you is like one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. And the blessings that I'm getting, I'm accumulating. Okay, but auntie, I mean, that's a little selfish. Where are you putting the blessings? I'm putting in this river okay. that is going to flow down ah, so to my children and their children. So I know that a few of my generations are being blessed. Even some who are in the world, some who are still to come. Mm -hmm. But the least I could do for my blood and flesh is to try and make sure that they are surrounded with blessings. Well, Auntie, may you be blessed. Thank you. And, may we and you too. Thank you. I'll take it. Thank you for coming on today. Thank you. I love you. Mm -hmm.